Hello gorgeous, I hope you're in the mood for some bewilderment. We're checking out Tara Stanin with his beatbox mouth only cover of I Don't Wanna Know. It's such a brilliantly soulful R&B noughties classic. Of course I'm intrigued to see how someone is gonna do all of those instruments with their mouth simultaneously. Assuming you are also intrigued, let's jump on this <laughs> he was part of the Yanaha squadron. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Somebody said it's all you. What a clever individual. <laughs> we might be here sometime. Let's see if we can break down a couple of those breezy delicacies. So we have this sound. Which I suspect to be the upper teeth making partial contact with the lower lip. So the air isn't coming out of the lungs straight into the sound, it's being held in this sort of pressurized chamber to get that extremely breathy, punchy, wet sound. The sound of this trill is very clean and strong and it sounds like it's created uh, close to the exit point of the sound. So I'm guessing it's the tongue as opposed to something like the uvula. We've got that residual trumpety carrying on into that low note where he drops his larynx by lowering the jaw dramatically. A hundred and three times a second, you would need to vibrate your vocal folds to produce this pitch. And then at the same time, the uh, false vocal folds are vibrating half the speed to produce that one underneath. I love this technique so much. I use it all the time when I'm doing backing vocals. When you bring the jaw forward and the lips up like that, it creates so much space here for your voice to resonate and you can achieve this really warm, round, balanced mm. as opposed to mm. said it's all you. This is so cool! So we actually don't hear him say somebody. We're just filling in that blank ourselves. It's so fascinating the way that this works. I could go into so much nerdy and potentially boring detail about FM waves and stuff. But basically we're just detecting the different types of interruptions in the sound wave that comes before that vowel. B -g. We're perceiving the sound close enough to the B just to not let it interrupt our experience. I assume they do something similar with ventriloquism actually. Eyes are beginning to close. When B comes up, you need to figure out how to make a sound that approximates that without the lips. Yeah. Somebody said it's all you. Somebody said. It's like the whole of his tongue gets suctioned up and then slapped down. He has an amazing timbre. You. I'm pretty sure this one is an inhale. You can see the pressure in his neck as he inhales that big <laughs> gulp of air and stops it with the tongue. <coughs> wow, that's breezy. <coughs> Good old lip roll. Still baffles me. People do them on inhales, exhales, with sound, without sound, with independent tongue movements. I remain in awe. <laughs> Kissing, this is absolutely fabulous. I love it so much. It is easy, it's fun, and it's ever so effective. What's happening is the placement of the voice. The voice is doing the same thing in both examples, but in normal singing, the person you were kissing, you can hear how my sound waves that I'm creating in my voice are very much interrupted by the lips. They're very present. So why not switch it up? Place the voice all the way back here by 
making your face nice and goosey <laughs> and just seeing if you can hold your larynx or as far back as possible and use the same voice the person you were kissing from me it's just so fabulous the majority of the voices resonance in that time is actually happening on the throat it's getting trapped back there no. <laughs> all right so the nature the nature of a low note is the tissue that's vibrating whatever flappy fellows they're doing so at a low rate that's what produces a low sound the less times these things collide the lower the pitch and so if you think about it it shouldn't take a lot of pressure and force to vibrate anything <laughs> slowly right we try and force our voice into these low positions because they sound so big but they only sound big because of this clever design of space that the vocalist is doing if sound like a little tongue whistle there <laughs> no chance keep it on the low the same thing with keep it on the low he's got such good control over that area that he's actually able to change pitch of uh, both of these little sound qualities the rumbliness and the true voice quite quickly and very accurately a really electrifying harmonic experience he's creating. We're just everywhere all at the same time. One of the ways that he's managed to do that is by his constant use of octaves. We had like a and then he jumps up an octave and a half. No. Which is easy for him, right? Because all of the singy parts in this arrangement in what we call a thin dominant mixed voice. So everything's here. The vocal folds are stretched and elongated with little pressure. They're not being pressed together to do a bunch of strong, powerful singing. And so he can always retreat to this placement, which is obviously so natural and easy for him. Keep it to yourself. Keep it to yourself. I don't wanna know. I don't wanna know. It's super effective, but if planned right, physically not too demanding which is a win-win He's done it again! Oh, the truth, truth. He's found a tongue position that's snappy enough to kind of assimilate T, but also snappy enough to sound like a bloody, like a rim shot or something. It's a two for one. True, true. The difference between T and D is literally just voice. As soon as you subtract the voice, you can get a hard hitting sound, but our ears hear it as T. <laughs> that is bloody brilliant, isn't it? That it's like a bassy Oreo. It's a lilty sort of flippy transition, just the same way as it is when we go. Ooh. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm quite sure that these kind of <laughs> are quite a relief for him. Just an easy, <laughs> which is the sound that he's been using to sing with, like a thin dominant mixed voice. Um, and it's just shrouded in breath. <laughs> It gives him mental and physical availability to interject those big, bassy, boomy, brilliant things. Beats. <laughs> Could have said beats. The intervals that he's using for a lot of these melodic passages are weird. Hold you. Oh, it's so nice. I love it. For a brief moment there, this big, spacious, wet, reverb sound that's given his voice like a lovely jacuzzi to float around in it, it went so we're only really using this big swirly whirly reverb for when it's one specific very impactful sound it really suits those big bassy sounds where he's activating you know, several flappy tissues at once and then so to have something that's going to prolong those harmonic layers and let us sit in them for a while is really nice the truth, truth. but baby keep it to yourself i don't wanna no see if you prime it keep it on the no. because my heart beats 
This chorus bloody slaps. The second one especially because you have the anticipation from the first one that you know it's gonna be this huge bumpy ride between octaves, but like not bumpy because it's smooth with the reverb and everything. And it's just, ugh! it's spaced out kind of like a zigzag. So you're never in one place for too long. It just drops you in and lifts you out. It's like a camel ride. It's a lovely little uvula trill he does there, I think, to get those trills on heart and can't. The dodgy ass, gross ass, dangly thing is like a tiny fleshy punching bag and it creeps me out and I hate that it's there. But you know, if you've got it and it's gonna be gross and weird, you might as well use it to create interesting vocal qualities. Here's my heart. It is quite helpful to keep the mouth quite small because if we open it too much, we might be prone to flapping something a little bit deeper. I'm actually trapping the uvula. <laughs> Oh my God, why? Don't, oh baby, I don't wanna mm. Oh, I love that. Mm. It's very, very creative. It's really nice to keep that bass literally ticking over by doing t -t 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 -t. But One thing that tells me is there's a high likelihood due to physics that he's mostly resonating this bass sound out of his nose because if it was really oral where the sound was coming from, it would be super difficult to t -t 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 keep that going at the same time as the voicey bassiness. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. I love that A sharp, very nice. Because it was whole tones. We've spoken about the whole tones, whole tone scale before when we were analyzing Gene. That is a type of whole tone scale. Usually scales have a bunch of different intervals between them, like sometimes a semitone, sometimes a full tone, sometimes a tone and a half. You only usually need to get at least three notes in before some of those intervals start to change and take the form of scales that we recognize, like the pentatonic scale or a major scale or a minor scale. But this was really cool because there was a whole tone in between each of the notes in that four note riff. And it was just nice. <laughs> And the great thing about that note for him is that it doesn't use his voice at all, it's just the lips. So his voice is all chill, ready to do. <laughs> so it just seems like the more components you have up here that you train, the more you can kind of distribute the tasks. The load is basically shared through all the different voice components. And once you learn what kind of frequency spectrum you can cover with all the different ones, that, that that's how it's done, you know? Like his natural singing technique is very, very good. He really knows what he's doing. The way that he leans back for some of the higher notes. To yourself, I don't Cause he knows he doesn't want to strain and put pressure on his voice. I would bet some money that He's had a lot of stick for using this amount of reverb because there'll be so many people like, yeah, well, it's a shame that this isn't real because it has so many f***ing effects on it. It doesn't matter how much reverb you put on something, you can't create sounds out of nothing. Even like uh, voice transformation plugins, like distortions, there's plugins that can f*** around with the frequency of your voice so much and make you sound like a robot, harmonize it for you and stuff. Yeah, there are, but I'm telling you now, there isn't a plugin that creates this. <laughs> no, you have to lay the foundation with something. Would it sound as effective without them? Probably not. I would say definitely not. The performance has been most definitely enhanced by post-production such as Reverb, that's the point where it's supposed to enhance it. So if you are finding yourself on the haters fence, I say kindly step down using the ladder of wisdom <laughs> that plugins are really just for enhancement. He's ultimately managed to create an entirely immersive, constantly exciting sonic experience with his 
voice and a few reverb plugins. This is pretty bloody miraculous if you ask me. The beatbox skills are obviously fabulous. Let's read out today's oracle card. The Prophecy Penguin, who says, it is all bollocks. Ultimately, it's all bollocks. This game of life is an illusion in a much bigger picture of universal existence. The goal is peace and happiness, right? Keep your focus on being in that vibe in every moment and balls to the rest. Thank you so much for choosing to hang out with me today. It has been a pleasure analyzing Taras with you. If there are any other beatboxes or singers or anything musical that you want me to have a look at and have a little analyzer route, then please do let me know down below on the comments. I will do a happy dance if you decide to join our patron or help me out on Buy Me A Coffee and an additional happy wiggle, just like this one. <laughs> if you choose to like the video and subscribe to my channel, it will really help me make more videos. If you're here at the premiere, then please accept this ginormous hug. Thank you so much. And if you're here at any other time, here is a ginormous hug for you. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you again next time. Love you loads. Mwah. Bye. We can do this again. In fact, I would love to do this again. <sighs> Let's see what we're doing today. What's the word I'm looking for? Drinking coffee every day didn't work for me, but I couldn't figure out why. I'm glad we had that little talk. I assume that camel rides are quite bouncy. I don't know. I don't have a camel. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but it's going to have to be long enough for me to analyze every single one of these sounds within an inch of their lives. <laughs> I can just imagine like these tiny little bacterias like punching it because I think that's what it's for. It's supposed to trap sh before it goes down your throat, like loads of things are, like tonsils. So I don't know why we need that as well. <laughs> for example, there's some cat, it's some cat. <laughs> then jump on board the. Oh god.